Hello again. I have a suspicion that even my most ardent fans will regard the title of this video as being more than a little demented. Surely I'm not aiming to tell people that Britain did not win the Battle of Waterloo as they learned at school. Well, let's see. We probably know how Napoleon Bonaparte conquered most of Europe in the late 18th and early 19th century until he was defeated by a coalition of forces including Prussia, Austria, Russia, Britain and so on. And in 1814 he was exiled to the island of Elba which lays off the coast of Italy near the port of Piombino. The following year he escaped from Elba, returned to France and gathered a huge army. Army consisting of somewhere in the region of 73,000 soldiers. In June 1815 the British commander Lord Wellington was in Brussels when he received word that Napoleon and his army were marching towards Brussels. It would take a long time for the Russians and Austrians to mobilise because they thought that all the fighting had been over for a year. The Prussians had an army that they had promised uh, Wellington would be ready if need be, an army of 50,000 people. By June the 18th, the day of the battle which would decide the future of Europe, the Duke of Wellington had at his disposal 68,000 soldiers, uh, really a mixed bag of nationalities. Along with the Prussians, these were the people that he would marshal against Napoleon. So there we are, we've got Napoleon's army of 73,000 and set against them is the army commanded by Wellington of 68,000 men. It's very finely balanced, but it's when we look at the composition of Wellington's forces that things get quite interesting. Among those 68,000 men were 17,000 from the Netherlands, 11,000 from Hanover, 6,000 from Brunswick, 3,000 from Nassau and the King's German Legion which consisted of 6,000 soldiers who had volunteered from Hanover, placed themselves at the disposal of the British. There were just 25,000 British soldiers. This force of 68,000 men was just about sufficient to balance the um, forces of Napoleon, but it wasn't enough to beat him. On June the 18th, the forces of Wellington and Napoleon fought each other to a standstill. By the late afternoon, the battle was absolutely deadlocked. And the only thing that Wellington was doing was hanging on. He said either night or Blucher must come because really it was a war of attrition. The British forces and the other nationalities at their command couldn't beat the French. All they could do was keep fighting them. It was a battle of attrition. So, that was the situation before the Prussians arrived. When the Prussians did turn up with their 50,000 men, it was possible to defeat Napoleon's army to uh, rout the French. What that meant was that on the battlefield that actually defeated Napoleon there were 79,000 men from what we would now call Germany as opposed to 25,000 British soldiers. In short the German troops outnumbered the British by more than three to one. Who won the battle of Napoleon? Well that's easy, it was the Germans. Having seen that the French army was defeated by 120,000 soldiers in total, of whom just a fifth were British, we might ask ourselves why we call this battle after an obscure, which took place in a very obscure corner of Belgium, after um, 
Waterloo? Why is it the Battle of Waterloo? It didn't take place anywhere near Waterloo. It's actually only in Britain and other English speaking countries that it's known as the Battle of Waterloo. This is because the fighting took place on a ridge called Mont Saint-Jean, which is um, what the French know the battle as today. They call it the Battle of Mont Saint-Jean. The Germans called it the Battle of the Belle Alliance. And the reason is that after the fighting was over, Blucher and Wellington happened to meet and they met outside an inn called the Belle Alliance, which Blucher thought would be the perfect title for the battle, the Battle of the Belle Alliance, the beautiful alliance. Wellington wasn't having any of it. His headquarters were at Waterloo, which was three miles from where the fighting took place. But he was determined to have the battle called Waterloo for a very simple reason. He wanted a name for his famous victory that any Englishman could pronounce. So they might struggle in Mont Saint-Jean or Belle Alliance, but Waterloo is dead easy. We've even got a station in London called Waterloo Station. And that's the reason that he stuck out for it. And it's the reason that we know it today. It's a Battle of Waterloo. If you look in French and German books, you won't find it called the Battle of Waterloo at all. When Blucher got back to his own country, he had a square laid out in Berlin called uh, Belle Alliance Platz, a bit like Trafalgar Square in London to celebrate the battle. So there we have it. The battle was actually a famous victory for the Germans in which the British army played only a minor role. 